Make sure to subscribe and click that notification bell if you want to get the videos as soon as they upload. YouTube, what up? Welcome back to another Pounds 978 custom video. And today I want to talk to you guys about Mortal Kombat, Baraka. Someone in the comment section asked me what was the difference between a McFarlane and a Storm Collectibles Mortal Kombat figure. And I thought this was a good opportunity to pull out two of the most recent of both of the company's figures, Baraka. Both from different games. Baraka from McFarlane is from Mortal Kombat 11. Baraka from Storm Collectibles is from Mortal Kombat 3 but they both are pretty cool. And I wanted to kind of show you the differences between the two, designs, detail, articulation, price point. If you ask the average collector, they'll tell you Storm Collectible wins without a doubt. But if you pay attention close to both of these figures, you might be in for a surprise. The box art gives you a general idea of what you'll be receiving in the package. The back of the McFarlane box is just a figure. And on the back of the Storm Collectibles box are a bunch of accessories and fatality parts, and that's cool. You can read that description if you want to know a little bit more about Baraka, but there is no description on the McFarlane box. Baraka, one of the most gruesome, ugliest characters in the Mortal Kombat franchise. I never cared too much for him. I did play with him a few times when he first came out and I thought he was pretty cool. Played different than a lot of other characters I was familiar with. But you want to know what the differences are between the Storm Collectibles and the McFarlanes, right? You don't want to know a whole biography about Baraka. And there are many differences it's pretty interesting because at first I thought also that Storm Collectible would destroy McFarlane and after like playing with these two figures side by side it's kind of funny and I want to run them by really quick. It's nothing surprising, it's nothing that you're not familiar with if you've ever held any one of these two figures in your hand. I don't have a rating system but you can rate them however you want from sculpt to accuracy to the game to design to execution to accessories, uh, articulation, you know, there's a lot of ways to, to judge an action figure on what you think is a worthy action figure, right? Because everyone has their preferences. I can't tell you what a good action figure is if you like a specific kind of toy. So what I'm going to do is just tell you what I think is the better toy of the two and why. You may have different reasons as to why you think the opposite is better. And again, I can understand because some things factor and actually mean more than others. And what I mean by that is like price point, for example, like McFarlane charges $20 for most of his toys, 20, 25, 26, depending on where you live and what state and taxes and stuff. But Storm Collectibles is usually 75 plus once they sell out, they go for hundreds, sometimes two, 300 bucks. Luckily, Baraka's like still at a good 75, 80 bucks. So that's three, four times more than the average McFarlane toy, and that could shy any collector from wanting to pick that up. Storm Collectibles, on the other hand, comes with many accessories like interchangeable hands, a extra head, special moves, fatality pieces, bloody pieces. These things sometimes are so over the top that it almost makes the action figure. I know it doesn't really, but it's something to look forward to because with every new release, they always outdo themselves again with fatality parts and bloody pieces and I love that. That's what I love about Storm Collectibles, that they keep kind of reinventing themselves with fatality parts. Not to take away from this impaled brain accessory too because it's pretty cool. I'm gonna pretend like I don't know anything about Baraka and you are showing me these two figures for the first time. If I were to look at both of these figures, I would probably say that the one on the left looks like a badass figure. Like, I see that and be like, damn, his mouth is all bloody, his blood splat all on his chest, his arm, he has spikes on his arm, he has butterfly joints. Like, just off the looks alone, I say that figure is ferocious, and I might want to pick that figure up. Looking at the one on the right, he looks a little bulky, he looks a little goofy, honestly, he looks cartoonish. The sculpt is done really well, but it does look cartoon and balloonish in comparison to the McFarlane one, if you want to look at, like, realism in the figure. Storm Collectibles Baraka's teeth look like dentures are ready to fall out of his face. But to Storm's credit with the design, it is super accurate to the video game. And you gotta love that. The only thing I said, it just looks like it's balloonish. The shoulders look a little big and the arms are big. Baraka's not this big in the game, but that's just the style of Storm Collectibles. That's what they do. You see they both have arm blades. Both of them are detachable, so that's a plus from both sides. Before I forget, 
This is the bloody variant for Baraka. There's one with black pants that has no blood on it. And in reverse, this is the clean version for the Storm Collectibles Baraka. There's a bloody variant that has green throughout the whole suit. So it's only fair that I mention that because it should have been a fair review with the clean versus clean and the bloody versus bloody, but here's a bloody and clean. You get it? You get it. The impaled brain and the claws, if you want to consider the claws accessories, I would because they can come on and off, but the brain is pretty much it. And for what it is, it looks pretty good. It's washed nice. It has detail in the membrane, so it looks kind of like a brain. Should have had some blood on it because, I mean, overall, this is the bloody version. So I would have liked to see that. The teeth are painted really nice though. The blood on it, it looks really like slimy and wet. So I do like that look. The eyes are painted really nice too. He has like cat eyes, they're fiery. The sculpt on the face is nice. The wrinkles, the, the crease, the details, it's nice. Same with this Baraka. Sculpted really well. The black eyes give it this sinister look. The teeth are the only thing that kind of bother me, but it does look really nice. Looks better than the video game because you don't get this type of detail in the video game. Some people don't care for accessories and other people love the idea of accessories because it allows more playability and posing and fun. And you just spend more time with your action figure when you have cool accessories. And nowadays when people are building dioramas, you definitely want your accessories. So I gotta give this one to Storm Collectibles. You get interchangeable hands, head, weapons, fatality pieces, special pieces, you name it. You name it. This is how high you can raise Baraka's arms. It's not too high, it's not too bad. I mean, I don't know how much higher do you need, but I think we can go a little higher than that. Marvel Legends go slightly higher than this. And to be honest, this is up all the way with the butterfly joints. It's weird because sometimes McFarlane's butterfly joints move up and down rather than back and forth like they properly should. And I don't know why they do that. A lot of them do that. With the Storm Collectibles Baraka, you can get a little more leverage and raise the arms up to get that Y shape, all the way to the point where you can even do the song. These look pretty even, but if you look closely, you get more bend and twists with the diaphragm and ab crunch on the Storm Collectibles Baraka. It's hard to really tell in this position, and that's why I put it there, because it shows that you can kind of put them in similar positions even though the McFarlane one is less articulated. This has more of a problem when it comes to articulating your figure where Storm Collectibles does an amazing job at that. I will also mention that balancing the Storm Collectibles seems easier than balancing the McFarlane. It was really hard for me to get him in this position, maybe because the feet are really slim and there's really no ankle pivot on any of these figures, but it does function better on the Storm Collectibles and the feet are wider so it does allow it to balance easier. And that's important, again, because if you want dynamic poses, you need balance. And that's another reason why I believe all McFarlane figures come with a stand. If you want, I can show you a sped up clip on how long it took me to balance this guy. This is what caught me by surprise because I know the Storm Collectibles ab crunch and diaphragm joint system works really well. So to see McFarlane's figure do pretty much the same thing had me pretty surprised. The Storm Collectibles Baraka still gets more leverage. You can bend him down more. He's just a little stiff. Mine seems to be a little stiff. McFarlane just doesn't go down. Todd McFarlane likes to make new sculpts with each figure he makes. And I think that's pretty cool. So with every figure you're getting something unique. Whereas with Storm Collectibles, they like to reuse things. To the credit, I think this Baraka is new. A lot of it is new. But I wouldn't be surprised if some of it was reused. Where with McFarlane, everything is brand new. You're not gonna see any of this stuff on any one of the figures unless it's probably pins. But none of this stuff suits any other character. You won't see these pants on Raiden. 
you won't see that upper torso on anyone else. And I think that's pretty cool. It's pretty cost worthy, but it works. It makes every figure its own. It builds character with its own unique look. But do you want looks or do you want articulation? It's like, do you want brains or body? You can't have both. And for me, I think sometimes, most of the time, articulation is key because you can move a figure in any pose. Like anywhere the human body moves, you can move this figure. And it's so impressive that you can't stop posing it, especially with the number of accessories they give you. You can do so many things. Problems are these blades fall out so fast. I know you've seen that a couple times already. And my joints are a little tight at the ab crunch and diaphragm joint. With Storm Collectibles, you get a two ball peg neck system that allows you a little more articulation. It's probably hard to see with this, but with Storm, you get a little more movement. Now, I don't know why butterfly joints are so important to me. I think it just gives you so much more personality with upper torso movement and positioning. And because that's what you really focus on when you look at a superhero, their upper body position and posture, it's important. And so with McFarlane, their butterfly joints don't really function as well as they should in comparison to Storm Collectibles or even some Marvel Legends. So I hope that McFarlane focuses more on the diaphragm, the ab crunch, and the butterfly joints in the future. I'm not so concerned with the hips being able to split, even though Storm's Baraka gets a lot more split. And I guess that was part of the reason why it was hard to pose. You don't get a thigh swivel much with either one. Storms you get a little more, but you do get a double jointed knees that work really well with both of them, but they suffer from not so great ankle articulation. Storm Collectibles and McFarlane Baraka, those are pretty much the differences between these figures. Articulation, sculpt, accessories, price. Those four things really major in whether you should grab either one of these figures or not. So if you don't have a lot of money to pay for high-end model figures, then probably grab the McFarlane one. If you got a little more money to spend and or you care more about articulation and accessories and things like that, or you're just more of a fan of the Mortal Kombat 3 design, then Storm Collectibles is for you. But I couldn't tell you which one of these figures are better. I guess I'm gonna rate them at 60, 40. Storm Collectibles wins by just 10%. And that's pretty tough to say. That's pretty, that's pretty crazy. Guys, if you like this video, let me know what you think. Let me know what your opinions are of these two figures. Feel free to comment down below your thoughts. If you want to see more of this kind of stuff, also subscribe. Click that notification bell, of course, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. But if you choose to subscribe, you the man. Yes, you. Everyone below in the comments. Yes, you too. Thank you very much for showing me love. Who knew? It's ironic how we think out the box for you too, right? Same, 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 same. Everybody.